That's right, my friends. Welcome to another episode of ChristianPodcast.com, also known as Christian Podcast Latino. Ooh. So we are Beto and Millie, and today we have a special guest, Amy Cardiff. Thank you. Welcome Whee! to the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Beto, you just told us that you're an introvert. I don't think with that intro, you're an introvert. <laughs> no? no? No. You the come alive on this. Okay, so I'll tell you what happens. Millie is so extrovert, like next level extrovert. She makes me look like an introvert. I don't know, even on the podcast? Uh, probably on the podcast, I'll... it depends. <laughs> yeah, she interrupts <laughs> me a lot, but I tend to do the same. Okay. And who are our little friends today? Oh, this is uh, Pearl and Marshmallow. Pearl and Marshmallow. Yes. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I was going to leave them on the feel call. like home? I totally feel like home. I love yeah. this. You know, we had one episode with our dog Manchitas. And it was like like being in my house in my living room. <laughs> well, you said Manchita sleeps with you too. Yes. So part of the family. Part of the family. I love it. I love it. <laughs> There we go. And you were telling us uh, before we started how you how you uh, knew Beto was uh, the one that God sent for you. I love that mm -hmm. story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was sharing that. Who's doing the interview? Her or us? She's interviewing <laughs> us at this point. Yes. And she's a leader. You can tell. Uh -huh. So <laughs> yeah, I, I was telling you that God spoke to me twice like cl clearly that um the first time i was in the mountains we were on a retreat and i always was looking for or i always had a boyfriend you know mm -hmm. I, i don't know how to be by myself or be I w if the funny thing i will break with someone and at the next day i have a boyfriend already and they were like how casually do there's it? the next one How do you do it? <laughs> Actually, But I, I feel like the next day, <laughs> crazy. Uh, now I feel so bad, right? But that was my need to don't be lonely because I I meet uh, my mom. My mom died when I was 14. My dad abandoned me, so I feel like I fulfill my happiness or whatever with with having someone. And and it's kind of sad because uh, I always I was dating, so I didn't have so many friends. Mm. because my boyfriend will be my everything mm. and I will work so hard to be part of his family and people can love me and accept me but I was choose wrong with toxic people or with addictions mm -hmm. which I was doing trying doing the same like my mom did you know yeah my dad was an alcoholic so and plus it's normal in Mexico everybody almost everybody drinks it's cultural you know and tequila mariachi fiesta We're like a party people. <laughs> yeah. In the U.S., they only drink on Cinco de Mayo. Right, right Margarita. Uh, there's only drinkers on But that day. I think day. <laughs> a lot of people can relate to that story too, Millie, because uh, people are lonely these days mm. and they fill it with all the wrong things mm -hmm. like you're, you're talking about. But, you know, and that thing becomes their everything. Mm. Whereas for you, God spoke to you. and Too bad, it, because when I decide like, you know what, God? No more men in my life. I'm tired. Just you be here. You are the perfect shape for the one I have here inside. You are everything I need. So when I give it to him, Beto appear. You know? Wow. And God, and, and I was, I was, <laughs> and the be these beautiful mountains, everything was green, kind of chilly, the air, and uh, I was just having... You know, looking, and I was like kind of lost looking the landscape. It was like it's beautiful. And then I hear God saying, He is the one. That's Beto. the one, it's Beto. He's the one who you're going to marry. And I, I was like, I start crying. Like, yeah, I take him. Thank you. I was like, I'll take him. Yes. <laughs> and Beto, you said, you said you never dated anyone. Uh, I always say my. <laughs> my girlfriend from kindergarten but everybody says no that doesn't count to me it counted <laughs> so i don't know i considered it my first girlfriend but yeah second one would be millie oh <laughs> yes. and tell how you how you wrote it down uh, so so millie had this i guess i like writing right because i'm i'm an introvert really <laughs> <laughs> i'm an introvert But I like writing stuff and I wrote songs and things like that. So 
I had a, a journal and I would write stuff, right? And I mean, at the age, I was like 26 or 27, 26? 26. 26. So at that time, I mean, you're like actively looking for somebody, right? Mm -hmm. At least I was, right? Especially being single for so many years. So I was actively looking for someone. And um, so I would write stuff and I would... When I met Millie, we started, I started just sharing a little bit of what I wrote, mm -hmm. you know? So I guess at some point, you know, when she was talking with God, she felt like, oh, okay, this is the man for you. And she wrote down it. So when she wrote it, that's, I read it and I'm like, oh, okay. Cause I was an introvert. So I would never ask anybody out, you know, like girls out and stuff like that. Cause I'm, I'm shy. I don't know how to. But when I read what she wrote, I'm like, oh, so she does like me. She's interested in me. And she actually said that God, she said yes to God. Yeah. Um, in my favor. So, okay, that's, she's and the that one. And that gave you the confidence. It gave me the confidence that she's the one. And then you asked her? And then, no. And then, so we're, <laughs> <laughs> so we're in a, in a table and this is a Christian camp somewhere in, in Big Bear up there, right? So everybody in the table is kind of like kids, little kids stuff. Okay, everybody in the table is going to say who they like or love and where are they. So we went around the table, you know, so everybody's like, oh, I love my girlfriend and she's right here, you know. Oh, I love this guy, but he's in college or things like that, right? So then it got to me and I said, well, I really like Millie and she's right there. You know, and then it got to Millie and, like, Ay, this and Millie, Millie is like this. <laughs> so Millie stands up. Really, no, Millie's, down, eh? Millie I has always that. been really proper, right? Um, so Millie stands up and she's like, this has been a great camp and I've learned so much. I would like to introduce to all of you Beto, my boyfriend. <laughs> and boom, she introduced me as her boyfriend. So I'm like, oh, okay, so this is, she confirmed it. <laughs> and also it made it legit. It uh, was so point. cute because they were, they were younger than us, right? And imagine, so I had this rough life, like super hard. I already, when I moved here, I was a teacher at the university. I went, a Christian uh, university, private. It's the best five private schools in Guadalajara. And I had the opportunity to teach there for five, for two years. Mm -hmm. I had my master's degree um, there too. So I was teaching. I was working at the university. I was like, oh, these childs, right? They were so cute. And I, I really uh, enjoyed that time. And they put together two chairs. And they start singing. Oh, and yes. I remember this girl. I forgot her name. Um, she, oh, I wrote this song because I know one day I'm going to marry and nobody listen, nobody knows this song, but I want to share with you guys in this moment. So it was so a special time for her and for us too. And they were praying over us and singing that special soul song wow. mm -hmm. that she wrote. Um, yes. I, I didn't remember that. Yeah, so that was just so coming cute. back. Thank that you, Amy. So cute. You're you're bringing out the vision. Oh, I love <laughs> that was the love so, stories. That was That's so cool. cute. Uh huh. Yeah, the song. Uh, yeah, I forgot her name, but she went on to like work. Uh, she was at Vanguard. That's why Millie says they were kids because they were college age, mm -hmm. and we were 26, so we're the older ones, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. only three years mm -hmm. older than they were, or maybe four. Uh, but she was at Vanguard and then she ended up, I think, working for like CNN or one of those like mm -hmm. big mm -hmm. uh, news networks She's in, so talented. in mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she yeah. was originally from uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Yeah, Puerto Rico. <laughs> so it was great. I mean, great. Then the topic of the whole camp was like, who am I going to marry? So guess what? We found out. <laughs> <laughs> at the camp. <laughs> at the camp. And we didn't... When we went to the camp, we were just kind of like supporting because one of my friends was going to Vanguard and he told me, because I play guitar, mm -hmm. uh, worship at our church. So he said, hey, would you help us lead worship at this uh, youth camp that we're going? Or no, I don't know if it's youth at that point, but no, young. Young adults. Or young something. adults yeah. camp. And uh, I said, oh, yeah. So I went, but I didn't know who was going to speak. I didn't know the theme of the camp. I didn't know anything other than I'm going to show up with my guitar and we're going to go and sing a few worship songs. And now here you are 16 years later in love as ever. See, 16 years later, 
with Millie. We're gonna And you're both still smiling. Yes. You're both still happy. No, yeah. we fight a lot. <laughs> what? Well, but well, I think it's normal. You love it's each other. Part of it. <laughs> I, I think it's like part of it. God put so many tests in your life, you know, yeah. and he's always text, testing us. Um, our fate. It's, it's, uh, I'm so proud to, or maybe he gave me the strength to keep uh, visioning, you know, and looking at the future because life is tough. Yeah. You know, it's not easy. Ah, yeah, we came together. And, you know, I, I remember listening to people. Yes. And sometimes people get mad because they put the trash in a different place or they forgot to put the, the, the top to the toothpaste and things like that. So we're still fighting for that. You know, the little things. That might <laughs> the be little, normal. The, the, little, the, the little meaningless things. things. <laughs> because Beto is messy and I need to be like everything clean and cleanse and, you know, Otherwise, I can sit down. Yeah. No dishes, no nothing you need out of their space. Clean, and my, you can relax. Uh -huh, and yeah. my, he cared less. You know? Oh, I care and, a little bit. When, yeah, because little I little do bit. that. <laughs> but the studio is so pretty and clean. Yes. I mean, this is... I think this is this is where we two like, come together and agree. Mm -hmm. wow. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. This is, you know what, the first time I came to this studio. Do you know, this is my living room. I we, we built this and we have no furniture. And I told my husband, honey, we need a studio. We need to be comfortable. It's, we don't have money to uh, put right on furniture. So let's just bring our living room. And my kids, do you know what they did? A soccer field. And my living room <laughs> with tape. They tape yeah. it. So now you have a soccer we, field? We, we came home and they're Well, it was only for one night. Oh, yeah, we got no. home and they like okay. mark, they're playing soccer. because Oh, there's no furniture here. <laughs> we're going to enjoy it while we can. <laughs> yeah. Destroy my house. <laughs> but what were you saying, Amy, when you first came? Oh, yeah. We were going to say something. I just felt like this was such a homey place. Mm. And how That's sweet cool. it was and how anointed. I felt like when I was talking to you, it was just a well, really great conversation. Yeah. That you can just relax here and talk about what you need to talk about mm -hmm. get off your chest and mm -hmm. yes also that just god was in it mm -hmm. you know millie has a great way of just keeping you busy with your words well you keep it going right yeah it's easy to keep it going when you have people who who like to talk and like to who love god i think that brings that makes you comfortable to talk mm. and you said you're very open yes <laughs> a little bit too much well that's a good thing though i think it's good people want honest truth and you do that so well Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's I a think, great compliment. I think you, God can use all of that, right? Yeah. And if you don't come transparent and with who you are, mm. so that would be fake. Yep. And and I don't like that. Mm. You know, I'm not going to try to be someone I am not. Right. And some people reject me for who I am. And, and it's sad. And I get sad and my heart is like in pain because I just love people. But when I open up who I am, can be because I don't have the same status, you know, the money issues, or because I have Jesus in my heart and people reject Jesus hard, bad, like, ugh. you know, like, yeah, no, you know, uh, I'm not going to deny who I am and who's my king. And that's, that's my purpose in life. I always think, share though, him. <laughs> Millie, that the right people are going to show up and the wrong people can get out, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't need those people who are not for you. They can go find someone else. Mm. So. But sad. So now I can understand Christ. I can understand God because he's always there at our door knocking, waiting for us. And he presents in so many forms. He's talking to people all the time. We're the ones we don't want to listen because when you come with your heart, like, where are you? Talk to me. I just want to know something, you know, like uh, what is the next step? And sometimes when people, the hard part is when the waiting room, you know, the the waiting time. Yeah. That's the hard part because when he replied, no, ah, okay, that's fine. Mm. But when he said, yes, you celebrate, they get, ah, you get so excited. But when he's not wait, yet, not yeah. yet. Yeah. Oh, hi. So when, when, <laughs> like, you know, I'm running late. Like it's mm -hmm. time. Wow. I need it from yesterday. 
<laughs> but, it but, seems like he does that a lot. Mm -hmm. But just like, like the story of you and Beto, he just it, at the right time, he, even when you don't expect it, it's the that's, best time. That's the thing. That's the thing. I know you're working. I know you're doing something. But imagine we're having, uh, we're fighting not just with that own body our own mind our own self we fighting with the devil yeah and we are fighting with the world it's tough if you're not in the world if you don't know who is jesus and who he is in our lives i don't know how people can do that honestly because just this morning i wake up and i just have nightmares You know, and like, oh, how mean I am. And I, I detected that, that that nightmare was from me. What's not the devil? Was me, my jealousy, because I want to be with my family. My, my sister, she just have a, a newborn baby. Mm. And all my family is in the room. All my family is helping her. Nobody helped me here in the U.S. to, you know, when I was like, uh, Uh, when I delivered my babies and I have another two with my third one it was so hard, you know, like I remember my first baby, my, my grandma asked me, honey, who's going to assist you? you know, what are you talking about, grandma? Yeah, you need to be in bed for 40 days and you do not do nothing. And, you know, somebody needs to shower. You're like, that doesn't exist here. <laughs> <laughs> At the second day, I was washing my 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 shower and my my bathroom, or like because I like things clean. Yeah, I can handle it. So thanks God, I had my babies natural. So I feel that you can stand up at the uh, after two hours of labor, you can do everything, right? Yeah. When you they open, probably will will be different. But I I was like just doing normal life. But I, I was like, me too. You know, do I, so I wake up sad, like, Millie, you're mean. That, that, because my, my feelings and my jealousy, because I'm not there and my whole family is there. I had these bad dreams and I call, I, my sister called me this morning. She never called me because she's busy with the baby. And she calls me like, Sol, I miss you. Aww. And I know I want to be there. And I was mad at my aunt and my, you know, I was fighting with her because you are mine. <laughs> you know, I, I was a mother for her. Yeah. So for her it was tough too when I moved here because She I was a mom you. and a yeah. dad for her, you know. But yeah, so I pray to God. I ask God, just help me through this. Uh, I know you have a purpose for my family, for my kids. And what I shared, you know, we all went to a dinner, a fancy dinner about C.S. Lewis. It was so amazing. And they give us a golden envelope. And inside yeah. of the envelope, you will open it and they have an inscription. Wait, back up, back up. So on, what was that, Friday night, Saturday night? Saturday uh, night. Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, we all... We all here uh -huh. went to the dinner yeah. and were. It was a surprise because I don't know you were. Yeah, you, no, you was I planning saw on going. And then I was like, wait, what? <laughs> But yeah, okay, then go on. Okay, so then we sat down at the dinner table and, and there different were gold tables. Envelopes. You and know, we all tables, have yeah. one. And there was a little gold envelope that they tell you, don't don't open this until uh, we tell you. Mm -hmm. And then what? Okay, keep going. And then I asked God, talk to me. And I'm the only one who have a different scripture. All of them sounds the same. It's a different verse, but everything was about the light and the, um, the salt and oh. the darkness. Mm -hmm. No, mine was like, you are made by image of God. Mm. You are in charge oh, yes. to have the domain of over all the animals. And I started crying, and, you know, and, and I told them, My experience with this is I'm already doing that. You know, I reproduce. <laughs> I have three wonderful kids that I don't know who are they. Mm -hmm. They're so talented. They're so kind. Joseph, I went, you know, because the event we went was from Pacifica, our kids' school, your ex-school. And everybody, all the teachers, your son is doing great. Your son is doing great. Yeah, Be You know, I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. And my son came over and he told me, mommy, my friends, they asked me, your mom knows what you are doing. And I was like, no, she don't know. 
but it's okay, mommy. I know you're busy. Because he's doing like cross country so good that now he um, he went like a race over the seniors to everybody. He was the first one. Wow. So he's and he never ran before. And he got a scholarship. And he got a scholarship at the school. And he's doing great. And he's doing amazing. And he's been three months at Pacifica. Yeah. And my son already changed. That school is amazing. My the son is so happy. I'm so glad your son likes it. Because, I, I mean, that school changed our life. I love mm -hmm. that school. I love the teachers. Um, one of the, the things I talk about in my vision workshop is uh, this assignment, the Dr. Woods. He's one of the teachers there at Pacifica. Mm -hmm. He told us in his book club, he gives to the kids. He says, I want you to write down your priorities, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people say the right thing. They say, God, you know, your faith, your friends, your family. And then he tells them, now I want you to keep track of what you actually do that day. And like God ends up being maybe two minutes of prayer. Mm -hmm. And then their cell phone or their social media ends up being kind of the biggest part. So their, their life doesn't match their priorities, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like, I write the same things. I write God, you know, my faith, my family, but then I spend such little time doing my actual priorities, right? Have mm. you, that school just makes you realize what your priorities are mm. too. I mean, they force the kids to like put their priorities in order, don't you think? Well, three months and I have a different son. Really? Okay, I'm, he's always been doing good. He is my police kid at home. You know, he, he is the perfect child, my son say, <laughs> my middle one. Oh, he's so hard, you know, how I'm going to compete with this. He's a perfect boy because he's always been so good, you yeah. know. And I, I never helped him with homework because my English is not pretty good. The math is totally different than in Mexico. So they're, they're by themselves. I just force them to be in the table. I fed them. That's my job. You do your job. <laughs> yeah. if, you need help, if you need help, yeah, I can learn. call your teacher but right they, now. But they take the initiative, right? Isn't he taking the initiative now and doing the work himself? Uh, mm -hmm. But that's always. That's my first rule. You come from home, from school, and you sit down at the table. Okay. So now without telling them, they just move to the table. And I, while I'm making the food for them, they're working on their homework. Perfect. So... So look, I was saying like, yeah, God is always there for us. He wants to speak. He wants to tell us. He, you know, but the the waiting time is tough. And not just for room. me. I, I like yeah, how you put that. The, the, waiting, the waiting room. room. Nobody I likes that. You know, they, when you go to the doctors, I went this morning. Like uh, they, they say at A was my appointment. And they say 30 and I have things to do. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> They kept you in the waiting room. So now, and I checked the list, and we're like three people at the same hour. Oy. So how they do that, <laughs> right? So, so yeah, but, but God, but God is always good because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. So no Amen. matter what, and I will say that no matter what, what happened, God is always good. And then something clicks. Oh, and start fighting again. You know, I feel like I'm I'm in this. I'm trying to live Ephesians six. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. we we ha we need to put all the armor of God. God on, yeah. So we yeah. have the shield okay. that can protect us, right? Yeah. And this shield is not just to cover this part because that's why we have the other the the other one who goes on our chest. Mm -hmm. It is what the breastplate of the righteousness. Breast, uh -huh. Breastplate. But that's not enough. We have, you know, we helmet have the helmet of salvation, salvation, but that's not enough. Yeah. You know, we need the shield and that can cover your whole body. It's not just here. We, yeah. we will think it's just round and like the Capitan America. No way. It's cover us all. All. <laughs> so like, you know, and when, when the devil is distracted, I just pull my uh, sword of truth, choo, 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 you know, and <laughs> fast, <laughs> I destroy him. Chop, but chop. I need, I need my sword. Otherwise, uh, mm. I can get, you know, uh, in a dark place. It's surprising yes. to me that you go dark because you seem so positive. I'm an extrovert. You give me energy. Sorry. <laughs> And Beto give, give me, me energy. energy. <laughs> so, and I already went out and I was talking with the, I did some x-rays and I was talking to this Egyptian guy and I was sharing with him. So see, 
I just have my energy from him and I came here and I was like, I'm getting energized. Ready to go. But Beto, I think you're an extrovert too. You just have to be doing the right things like playing your guitar. You get energy from that or from doing mm -hmm. this podcast, right? Yes, the right things. I think that's good. The right things. Yeah. yeah. And she just gets every energy from everything and everyone. <laughs> yeah, from people mostly. <laughs> yeah. But I think I, I can get it from people too. But also, we like we were learning at the dinner with C.S. Lewis. Mm -hmm. It really impacted me when, because so there was one scholar from Cambridge, mm -hmm. right, giving Dr. the talk. Gide. Dr. Gide? Dr. Yes. Gide. Yes. Father Dr. Gide. Father. Yeah, I mean, he had so many titles and yeah. he's a musician <laughs> and <laughs> he's a father. And, it, and yeah. he was a poet. And he was a poet and he, he kind of like personally not knew C.S. Lewis, but he, you know, like he's so connected to C.S. Lewis yeah. that I think, I don't know, in a sense, it's almost like he's the closest connection we have to C.S. Lewis so amazing. in a sense. So it was really cool, you know, because I right now I'm reading, we finished The Magician's Nephew, the first book mm. of the Chronicles of Narnia with, with Dorian and Melody, our youngest kids. Last night, we're reading it. Mm. Uh, so we've been reading that and we got to talk with him a little bit at this dinner mm -hmm. at the end but something that impressed me is that he said that c.s lewis had a well, kind of like a personal debate right because he he came he was an atheist right that's kind of like his claim to fame that he used to be an atheist and then he became one of the most prominent christians in probably the 20th century right and but one of the things that that this uh, scholar was saying about him is that when he was debating, maybe in the nine, in 1926 or 1927, when he was converting, mm -hmm. um, that he was wrestling with the idea of reason. And he's like, you know, like what's on the other end? But then what he realized, you know, C.S. Lewis is that you need to have reason, but you need to have imagination too. And he actually named them in that poem, remember? Yes. He named the two. Uh -huh. And they were talking to each other, right? Yes. You remember that? Uh huh. Poem? It was called um, the second D poem. Demetrius, the Demetrius, and Athena's. Yeah. Right. Yes, and yeah. the po poem was called, I think, the reason. The yeah, the poem. Uh, the reason. Right? Mistakenly called the reason because that's uh, the cool thing about C.S. Lewis is that he never released his poems only till after he was dead. Mm. That's when they published them. So this one was untitled and the guy that published it named it Reason. But then this this uh, scholar, right, he's like, I don't think it should be named that. It doesn't make sense, you know, because he was debating these two ideas. Mm, yeah. And especially in this poem. And and lo and behold, he talked to the person that published the the poems and he said, was it originally called Reason? Oh, no, not at all. You know, I had to name it something. So I named it, I named it Reason. And I mean, it was just genius, you know, have imagination on one side and uh, reason on the other. And I love that because I feel like we need to live in the in the tension of both. Yes. And you can't just have one and you can't just have the other. You need both. So that's yes. why we're the perfect couple. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yes, because Mimi is way more. Because 100%. Yes. He has 100% like. Imagination. Creativity. And creativity. Yeah. And, and that's what energizes them, me. But, but I think each of us have both of those going on in our heads all the time. Like we're always <laughs> constantly arguing with our own reason and imagination, don't you yes. think? Yes. yes. Like each of us personally too. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you're creative but and she's reasonable. But you're also, she's also creative and you're mm -hmm. also reasonable. Mm -hmm. And it makes so much sense that in life, like when, I mean, one thing we all know about the brain, the brain is divided in two, right? So on one side, you have your creative side and the other side of your brain, you reason. have your reason yeah. side. So it makes so much sense that everything points to like, you need both, you know, you can, I mean, maybe technically some work. people maybe can function with half of their brain, but, uh, but you need both, right? And I think that's in everything. You need both. And even in like theolo theological you know, talks, there's this idea of uh, orthodoxy and orthopraxy. So orthodoxy being like the right, the right way of believing something. But then orthopraxy, how do you put it to work, right? Mm. So I feel like, oh, wow, there's always that tension of like, you need both. Yeah. You need to have, you can't just, you know, talk the talk and not live it out. 
Right. You need right. to live it out. It makes me think of that scripture. Maybe you'll help me think of the scripture, but it, to cast down your imagination. So you need to work with only the right imagination too, because your mm. mind can really keep going on the wrong, mm. like the dark side, like mm. you were talking oh, about. Oh, that's good. You know what I mean? Yes. So you can start talking, you can start thinking the wrong things too. And your mind can be like, your mind can know what's right, but mm. you're, you know, you 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 go to the dark side very easily, like you were saying. Yeah, because even I though just you're was helping my son last night, yeah, he came dark, bad. He was like, Rah! and I touch, I put my my um, hand in his uh, forehead, and I start doing this because he was like this, it was like moody, you know. So I just relax this here. I just and I start talking to him, who's talking to you. Mm -hmm. You need to control yourself, like. Think, the devil is not going to put us down, Dorian. We're going to go happy to bed because he wants, you know, I feel like he started it, then me and then Dorian. I was fine. He was fine. Then Dorian, mm -hmm. you know, he just looking for someone to, to attack. Yeah. But we detect it like this because we know that our fight, it's not with a human being. It's with the spirit. Spirit of it. You know? <laughs> of negativity. Like, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, like because he was doing something wrong and I catch him and I tell him, don't do this because, you know, it's wrong. I don't want you to be in trouble. You know, it's for your good. But relax. No, I'm happy. You're happy. Everything is OK. If you know how to do good and you don't do it, Dorian, it's a sin. No. So that's it. So I calm him down. But, uh, and <laughs> we have, you know, this beautiful we all went happy to bed. And you was reading to them, right? We finished the magician's nephew mm -hmm. book. I mean, it was beautiful too, because it's connected to Aslan at the end. Mm. He's kind of like saying that, I mean, it's about the waiting room because Aslan's saying, you know, um, almost like think of, think of the experience you had with me and Aslan. I mean, those of us who are Christian, I guess we know, okay, Aslan represents Christ, King. right? Mm -hmm. Or Jesus. And he says, when you're back to the real world, remember how you interacted with me with aslan and remember that kind of like like i'm with you you know i'm hope mm -hmm. so whenever you're there and you're like everything's becoming too real right to remember you're just in the reason remember like imagine how it was when you were with me why do you uh, think it is that we forget so easily I, I mean, like from day to day, you yes. almost have to remember moment to moment why do you mm -hmm. think that is because he wants us to depend on him so yeah. we, it's like exercise. Mm. We have to do it all the time. All the time. Yeah. And for me, it's every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Like, oh, I know. I know who you are. That's true. So focus. The world attack me, you know. Sometimes it's people attack me. And it's like, I, I don't have self-control. But I remember like, oh, that's not him. That's not mm. her. I know who you're talking to me. And I, okay, and I, I refocus. I refocus. put my eyes in him again. Okay. That's yeah. such a good yeah. word, refocus. Mm -hmm. I love it. You have yeah. to remind yourself and then you have to refocus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're good at that though, Millie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's practice. <laughs> Are you yeah. good at it? Uh, I have to catch myself. Yeah. You know, like, no, for sure. I think we all like need to either go back to the word, but I love what you were saying, you know, cause you were saying kind of like, we kind of like lean to one or the other, right? Either reason or imagination. And you can see where people resource to one or the other and they kind of like get lost in either one, right? People are, oh, it's just facts. Yeah. Just mm. give me facts, right? And mm. there's no imagination anymore. Or people who are like way deceived by their imagination, they're like, hey, come back to reality a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right? I love how that connects with the meaning crisis we have right now. The mm -hmm. what crisis? Meaning. meaning crisis. Yes. Meaning. 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 Yeah, that's what he was saying too. The, like the, What's his name? Malcolm, who because was speaking. we don't know how to go in that friction that Beto was saying, you know, back mm -hmm. and forth, back and forth. Like, people is lost right now. It's not common sense. Yeah. They have no meaning of life. What is life? Yes. What is happiness? The way he said is, uh, reason offers you truth. 
but imagination offers you meaning, mm. right? So you need to, that's why you need both. Because you, you can have the facts, but what does that mean? Yeah. Hmm. Right? And I think right now, maybe society is more, more uh, uh, what do you say, charged on the, on the facts side, right? Especially as we develop our society and we're so technologically advanced and all these things are like, oh, everything is, needs to be scientifically proven. But then if it's just scientifically pr proven, you kind of lose the, and what does that mean? And what is that for? Right, and that's where you kind of like need to come back to imagination. How you can prove love and purpose? Okay. Yes, that's crazy. Yeah, right. Otherwise, you kind of get rid of like even love. You know, I've heard pastors who say, uh, well, one of them said, I I don't really believe in evolution because I think we would have gotten rid of love if it if it was true because love makes you weak, mm. right? And <laughs> I think it's that idea that in, in this sense, love pulls you. A little bit away from the facts, mm -hmm. right? Because you're just in love, <laughs> no, and there's no fact. The only fact is like I'm in love, you know? and that's. I mean, that's kind of cool. And I think also when what you were saying, you know, you're reminding us like, how did you meet, and how did you know you were for each other? And I can't help but think like, wow, you're refreshing us, and you're kind of like refocusing us <laughs> as you're asking these questions well, too. When I, I love that discussion about C.S. Lewis. And um, I mean, I just think about my own kids. My own kids, my daughter is super emotional. She's mm. so emotional and so into the imagination, very creative. She was studying to be a nurse. And my son is all about the facts. Mm. He, he, if it doesn't have facts, it's really hard for him to have faith. I mean, that, one of the things he's struggling right now is with his faith. He could tell that story. I'm not going to tell it. But um, it's it's funny to watch two separate people who came from me, my same <laughs> upbringing, mm. and they're so totally different. I know people say that about their kids, that it, their kids are totally different. But I, I wonder how to encourage more faith from my son who wants the facts, but also encourage more reason for my daughter who mm. sometimes gets so caught up in emotion. But wow. I think it's the two sides of me too. Do you, I, know, uh, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm very emotional, but I also, love to learn. I love mm. I love C.S. Lewis. And I think that we were talking about denominations the other night too when mm. we were at the C.S. Lewis, how just between the, the three of us here, we have four denominations of Christianity. Mm -hmm. You grew, grew up Catholic mm -hmm. and you became more Assemblies of God. I grew up more and then Baptist. And then Baptist. <laughs> so we've got a lot of, de but I think those denominations kind of represent these two things of reason and imagination. Mm. What do you guys think about that? They represent, uh, yeah, I think so. I think there's, and that's why I love them all, though. I mean, like I, I love agree. To be, I love the Pentecostal because I love the and and emotional. I but agree. then I'm also in a uh, in an Engl a pastoral class and in the Anglican Church, and they're very, you know, intellectual, and I like mm -hmm. that part too. Yes, so, I'm I, like you. I feel like I I feel like I now that I'm more and I'm more. I don't know. I've been in Christianity longer. Right, I'm 43, and I grew up like this. Right, I grew up in all kinds of different. I mean, for once, I grew up in Mexico where everybody's Catholic, mm. but I grew up Protestant among Catholics. Mm. Right, and then I came here and then started going to Pentecostal, and now we're in a Baptist <laughs> church. And you no, know, my cousin was he's a missionary with like a, a Bible. They're just called like biblical church or Bible Beautiful. church. Beautiful. So there's I love. And there's Dermot, all yeah. kinds and all of the above, but I think now I appreciate even as I met Millie and part of my family on my mom's side, they're Catholics. And I was telling Millie, like, I have a bigger appreciation just for how God wired us differently. Yes. Right? And and yes, I think we can we can go so far on the pendulum on either side, but I think there's I think the intention, the original intention of why all this denomination started is not wrong. You know, I think it's just mm -hmm. the wiring we have. And then for sure, I think it can deviate. But at the same time, I feel like it starts in a good place. You know, people are different. And I think that's that's good. <laughs> and hopefully that brings us together because we all know that we're not going to be safe for our religion, you know. We're going to be saved because we love God, we love Jesus, and He's the one who died for us on a cross. So we can be free and we can, uh, uh, you know, like He 
came back from the dead is the same thing with us. Yes. Thanks to him, we can be alive and we are going home one day. And so who cares if there's 35,000 denominations, but all this point us to Jesus. Gloria a Dios. Amen. Yes. Why not? <laughs> right? I think I think that's But we need to be unified. Yes. No uniform. Right? Yeah. No, because I think I, that's why it's so so beautiful when like the more I study scripture and it's amazing because you read the Bible and you learn something and you read it again and you learn something new and mm. you read it again and you keep mm -hmm. learning and there's always like something popping out because I, I think it never ends. But one of the things I've, I've learned is that the church, I just love how Jesus said, against the church, the gates of hell won't prevail against my church. Yeah. And that to me is just so powerful because I think, I mean, obviously Jesus is God and I think he knew when he came that he was going to have followers and that is his church and nothing will prevail against that church. And I think that's still strong, even if it's different denominations, I think within the denominations and even within people that maybe are not in any of those denominations, maybe they don't even consider themselves Christians. I think Jesus knows what his, who his church is. Mm. Right. He and and I think when you're kids. following him, I think, you know, too. Absolutely. I mean, and look how he brings people together. I mean, yes. it, it, in two weeks, I've known you. I mean, it's, mm. it's, and then I've seen you a few times at Pacifica at different here. Yes. And now today. Yes. And that is the how God brings a community <laughs> together and how he brings people together. Yeah. And I love I love the people he brings together. I love yes. the body yes. of Christ. And I love yeah. how crazy we all are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And so it's Millie's second time she heard God like clearly speak to her. Because she all the times, you know, she's like, Oh God, talk to me. You know, <laughs> she's she's like that. And, hey, and I love have that a good relationship with him. Right? That's, That's good. That. I love that, you know. But one was when she when God told her, yeah, Beto is the guy for you, right? You're supposed to marry him. So we talked about it at the, the beginning. Mm -hmm. But the second time she heard that was 15 years later at Pacifica Christian School. And she heard, I brought you from so far so that you can be here in this community. And this say, is your people. This is your people. This is your people. And then we started meeting people like you and awesome people. And now we're at this event of like C.S. Lewis and dinner and getting to know more people. So my it's friend invited impressive. me without, you know, like, she, how was she, we invite her for? Uh, she was here for a podcast. For a podcast, right? And then like, she hey, said, I'm going, going to yeah. this. Do you want to, I just want to be, be my guest. Come over. <laughs> and like, wow, what a small world. And she doesn't go to Pacifica. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> She's just supporting the school. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it's totally like a God thing like bringing us together oh, Beto, speaking of i want to ask not to interrupt you but how was your steak that night i loved it yes <laughs> because you didn't get the hamburger right but you got the steak yeah i Beto got a was steak telling me oh i love did, anytime there's the steak i'll get steak he, but you got the steak <laughs> yes. did you get a steak and a stomach cake no did you get a stomach i think it, i think that was for the coffee <laughs> you think so i think oh so gosh, that's i, I had the same thing Beto. really I'm kidding you i got so sick afterwards and i think it was the coffee not, not i think it was yeah i think it really was the well, did that you so. affect me yes you had the I, ate I ate oh, salmon i ate salmon too yeah yeah I no i think it uh because i it's happened to me before so i think and it like like acid or something yes exactly Wait, you got it too yes oh thank god that made me feel uh -huh. better that you <laughs> yes i think so i, I mean i'm my mom the next morning i was like something didn't sit right yeah because i don't think the steak was acid <laughs> yeah, i think the steak was awesome uh but oh. the coffee for sure and it was my third coffee of the day and it wasn't mm. decaf it was regular yes yeah so Eating i think that was it and i didn't put no milk or anything i just had it like that oh, i did but anyway <laughs> yeah so that must, i think that's what it was but it was a great night and great. it's just lovely to get to know more people. You know, we were talking to people outside before going into the, the dinner and kind of like geeking out about C.S. Lewis and asking people about 
their kids being at Pacifica, all that sort of stuff. So it was awesome. I mean, I feel like, wow. Yeah. Because I, I guess if I tie it back to that story of how Millie you know, wrote it down and then it gave me the confidence of like, oh, okay, she's the one for me. I think in this sense, you know, God tells Millie, this is your people. And then by being there and it's C.S. Lewis and it's stuff I love, it's like, okay, it's giving me the confidence of like, yeah, this is your people. Yeah. Go and yeah. have a good time. Mm -hmm. so because if, Millie knows I'm not like that. If you could <laughs> say, I was a surprise. Um, if you could say out of this podcast today, because I know I have to get going pretty soon, but if you could say one thing that people could take away this week from our discussion today, like take out one thing, what do you think it would be from our discussion today? that you want to encourage people with today? Refocus. <laughs> Refocus. Yeah. What was the other one you said? Refocus and remind yourself. Remind yourself. That who we are. Yeah, and in, refocus. In, in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because um, we're in a combat. Mm -hmm. We're fighting. You know? I Probably people is like, uh, they're great, but they're doing nothing. And it's hard to be here and be open and share the gospel and share God because I think the devil is attacking us more. I, I feel that every day, every moment, I just need to be aware of what I'm doing and who is, you know, it's me, it's the devil, it's the world, it's, you know, but when I'm protected mm -hmm. because I have the whole armor in me, I'm peaceful. Okay. And that's when we hear that, his peace surpasses our understanding because sometimes maybe we don't have food to eat for the next day. We have today, but tomorrow we don't know if we want to eat. Tomorrow I don't know if we want to have money to pay the rent. And that is tough. That's not easy. And can be, you know, other things like, um, I don't know. Uh, a relationship. A relationship, you know. Like for any, for every person is different. Right. You know, we always fighting with something. Yes. And your mind and, always goes to the negative thing, even the, the darkness rather than the light, mm -hmm. even though everything oh, is it's so easy because it's not our nature. Yeah. Because we're sending. We need to force ourselves to refocus on yes. that. What do you think, Beto, out of our conversation today? E, to me, it's the, the, the image one? of God. You know, when Millie said that she opened the envelope. And, you know, God created you in his image and then said he commanded you to, mm -hmm. to take control, to govern, basically. And I think, I think to me, that's kind of like what it's tying this all together, that when we're born, we're born in the image of God, right? Maybe you might be a baby and you might be learning as you grow and having all the input from everybody. But I think it's, it's almost like... I'm going to dare to say, as you are being born, you know, mm. you're made in the image of God. Maybe you don't know how to express it. Maybe you cry, maybe. Mm. Right. But I think, you know, you know, I think it's, it's a natural thing for us as humans to know. And then it's almost like this, this pastor was saying, you know, you're born a genius. And as you grow older, people start stripping it away because they start telling you, other things and you start believing those other things. Mm. So I think that to me would be the one you're, you are made in the image of God from the very beginning and go back to that refocus. Yeah. Remind yourself. Remind refocus yourself. and mature because I feel like we get so comfortable in drinking milk as a babies. <laughs> That's enough. You need to eat real food. Steak. You know, you need to pass to another level. Otherwise, you're never going to grow. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's keep eating food, real food. Yeah. You know, food that loves you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can be re have this energy back to continue fighting because it never is going to end. Mm -hmm. Mine would be to pay attention to the people God puts around you because they're mm. around you for a reason and who he brings into your life. And, uh, you know, I, I read a quote, I think I was on social media the other day, you never know God's love until you sit at the table with Judas mm -hmm. because you're going to have people you don't <laughs> like sitting at your table and you better learn to love them too. So mm -hmm. pay attention who God's putting in your life 
And if for, for me, it's all about the people. Like, it makes me love God more when I see who He brings into my life. Even if it's the people, like there's certain people I do not like, but now I look back at them and I go, wow, if I wouldn't have had that purpose, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm. Wow. If I wouldn't have had that person, you know, uh. some of them I really don't like. But now I look back and I see, oh, they, they actually brought some good out of me. Wow. The, That's great. The necessity of an enemy. We need it. Mm. We need our enemies. To grow up. Yeah. yeah. That's that takes the milk away real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I love that. Yeah, we need our enemies. Thank I think you for that's having super me. Super profound. Today. And point people to what's coming up because we know you have like a vision event. Who can go? Who should go? Yeah. What is um, that? So I, I hate it when people call it a vision board event because it's not a vision board event. It's I'm glad I didn't say board. Sorry, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like people need to. Remi be reminded of these things. What is your vision? Like, what are you talking to God about? What is he placed in your heart? It says to write it down, to make it clear and to take action for it. So once a year, I spend uh, three or four hours, I invite different speakers in and I have them come and talk to you about your vision, how they as professionals develop their vision for business, for their bodies. I have a neuroscientist come in, um, I have pastors come in uh, and they talk about vision. And I, I noticed that that creates a momentum in myself. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed that it's been doing it for other people, that as they're talking, we're getting ideas. And not all of them are Christians, but most of them are Christians. And they come in and they start talking about these ideas and it gives you an idea for what vision do you want? What do you wanna write down? What are you gonna work towards this year? And it says, you know, in this, in scripture that if you don't have a vision, you perish. Beto, so you need a vision. You, so you need a vision, everyone needs a vision, and you need to have the hope that God's gonna do that vision with you this year. And so we spend this time, it's on December 7th and it's at Lido House here in Newport. and. I'm excited about Where it. Where we can book our tickets. Yes, online. I'll give you the QR code. And you can post it. Awesome. Is that good? Yes, yeah. that's the easy Perfect. way. Yeah, I love it. I want to be there. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I hope fun. you will. Yes, both of you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, that Beto and Millie. Wonderful. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I love it. Thanks <laughs> for allowing my dogs. Oh, are yes, you kidding Pearl me? Pearl and Marshmallow, <laughs> so well behaved. He's like, what? Who <laughs> called you me? You guys <laughs> were the stars today. Yes. 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 So next we got to hang out with Manchitas one of these days. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> well, my friends, thank you for being here on another amazing episode of Christian Podcast Latino with Beto and <laughs> Millie and Amy. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure if you like this episode to maybe share it with a friend, give it a positive review, follow us, subscribe to the channel. We're on every single platform or you can visit us at christianpodcast.com. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.